Good morning, church. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we trust you have your Bible handy, and we're going to be jumping around the different Gospels. In this series, we're journeying with Christ from um, for throughout his ministry, looking at the different aspects. Today, we're going to look at the promises of Jesus, the promises he made to his disciples or to those who follow him. Jesus is going to declare his plan to build his church. Um, and he will return again, amen, to set up his kingdom right here on earth, we're told. Um, as we wait for his return, uh, Jesus gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit who will help us experience infinitely more until the Lord returns himself. For our infinitely more series, our theme verse is Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think immeasurably more than NIV says immeasurably more you can't measure how much he has in store so welcome to week five as we continue on our infinitely more series as we journey with Jesus through the four gospels to see we're going to discover many more promises today that he has made to us these I will statements <laughs> will strengthen our faith and declare the plans that he has for us. You know, it's easy to make promises. And we quickly learn <laughs> whose promises we can depend upon and whose we cannot. In fact, sometimes promises are hard to keep. We all know that. I'm sure we've all broke promises before. We told our kids or our spouse we would do this or that, and we failed to do it for this reason or that reason. We've all heard the saying, promises, promises. <laughs> but Jesus' promises always come true. They do. As Jesus declared, I will, these statements, they become instantly true. <laughs> instantly true. For every declaration that Jesus made that crossed his lips was guided by the Holy Spirit of God. And it originated in the Father God's heart. <laughs> so when those words came across, they are already fulfilled. We can trust his promises. For his promises are yes and amen. All his promises are yea and amen, the Bible says. And Jesus spoke purposely. He spoke passionately because he has all the power and all the authority to implement every single word that he spoke. It's, our, it's not my hope today that these statements will encourage your heart. They will encourage your heart with these truths from God's word. As we look for the fulfillment in each and every one of our own lives, right? We look for them. Jesus' first promise is found in Matthew 4, verse 19. He says, come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. <laughs> I will make you fishers of men, right? He said that. I will show you how to fish for people. I'm going to show you. So Jesus calls a group of fishermen, right? We know those disciples, right? And they drop their nets and they follow him. They follow him. And in this moment, he is using what the disciples are used to. Fishing. They're used to fishing. We've all heard a fish story a time or two, haven't we? You know, I caught a fish this big, I mean this big, and every time you tell it, it gets a little bigger, right? The fish stories, we know them. But these disciples were very familiar with fishing. 
four of them we know were professional fishermen. And so they knew that. And it's always a contest of who gets the biggest, who gets the most, right? Well, Jesus tells them not to worry because from now on they're going to fish for men, for men, right? And so he uses this analogy. He uses something that they would know to let them know he had something bigger in store for them, something greater for them to fish for, to fish for men. Who doesn't want to be told, I see something more in you? (laughs) Church, I believe in you. I believe God is doing a work in you, and I believe God wants you to do infinitely more, immeasurably more more that God's got a plan and he's got a purpose and he wants us to reach other people he said I'm going to show you how to reach other people I see more in you I see more in you than you see in your mirror he sees more in you he sees more in me than I would ever dream possible he sees that And he's going to draw it out. He's going to show us the way. Amen? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we look into your word this day, we pray that you would stir our hearts by your precious Holy Spirit, that you would quicken your word to our spirit, Lord, that you would instruct us and teach us your ways. Lord, remind us again of the promises you made to your disciples, to those who choose to follow you. Lord, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In chapter 11 of Matthew, Matthew eleven twenty eight, there's another promise there, another I will. First he said, I will send you out to be fishers of men. Then he tells them this. In verse 28, he says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. (laughs) What a great moment that would have been for these weary fishermen, right? They've been following Jesus. He says, come to me, and I will give you rest. All right, right? They worked hard, and now Jesus says, come to me, and I'm going to give you rest. Rest for your mind, rest for your body, rest for your soul. I will give you rest. I imagine they thought, boy, I'm all in. I am going to follow him. In fact, the next three I will statements that we see in the gospel, God, Jesus continues to encourage his disciples and build their faith. In John 6, verse 37, he says, All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. I will never reject you, one version says, right? All who come to me, I will never drive them away. That's security, isn't it? That's security and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to him, when we do his will, he comes to us and and he will never drive us away. He will never say, you know, we've all had relationships and they've gone good and then, so, then something happens and they're like, no, get away, get away. Jesus will never, never turn away his own. He will never drive them away. He will never reject you. That's a wonderful I will promise from Jesus. We see another one in John 14, 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. That's how we show our love, right? The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The New Living Translation says, I will love you and reveal myself to you. That is a precious promise we have from Jesus. He says, I will love you 
I will love you, and I will reveal myself to you. What a precious promise that is as we draw near to God, as we live a life pleasing to him. He will love us. Not that he loves us because of what we do. He loved us when we were yet sinners, the Bible says. In fact, he loved us so much that he died for us. I've said that before. He loves us like we are, but he loves us too much to leave us that way, right? But he promises here to love them, to reveal himself. Lord, I want to know you more. And he will reveal himself more and more to us throughout his word, throughout the scriptures. In John 14, 14, he says, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. We're told in other places, when we ask according to his will, he will do it. I will do it. Wow, what a promise that is. When we ask in his name, in the name of Jesus, we need to include that in our prayers. In the name of Jesus right? He will do it. He will do it. Now, I'm, the disciples must have been going, wow, we definitely picked the right teacher to follow. We definitely have the right leader here. He promises to love us. He promises never to leave us or reject us. He promises he'll do what we ask in his name. And we, when we look at all the great things that he's declaring that he will do for them, he is promising, and his promises are true. Remember, they're breathed by the Holy Spirit. They come from the heart of God. These promises are true. Every promise in the book is mine. Amen? Every chapter, every verse, every line, like the old song says, that we, they must have been so encouraged knowing that Jesus was going with them every step of the way. And Jesus is letting everyone know there are advantages to being in a relationship with him. When we're his, he promises to take care of us. Then after all these faith-building I will statements that Jesus gives, in Matthew 16, verse 18, he says this to Peter. He's talking to Peter. He says in Matthew 16, 18, And I tell you that you are Peter, meaning rock. And on this rock, I will build my church. Remember, Peter means rock. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Peter had just said that you are the Christ. And he said, on this rock, I am going to build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He says, I will build my church. That's a promise. I will build my church, he said. And this must have been hard on the disciples here. Everything was looking so good. All the promises were great. And then he says, I will build my church. Well, the problem is the disciples didn't know what a church was. They did not know what any idea what a church looked like. Maybe they thought Jesus was talking about a building. But we know it's not the building, don't we, church? We do. We used to say that over and over when we would go from rental place to rental place before God provided a permanent place in this village. And we would say the church is not the building, it's the people, right? And so, but the disciples didn't know this. They didn't know what a church was. There was no church before. And so... Jesus wasn't talking about a building. He's talking about a movement, his kingdom come, amen, upon the earth here. And he's declaring that he's going to build a movement of people, a movement of people to make up a church, that a people that are called by his name. We see in the book of Acts in the church at Antioch, it says 
that where the disciples were first called Christian because they were Christ-like. They were called by his name. Those that are called by his name were to go out, push back the darkness in the existing world, right? And the Greek word there for, for church is um, ecclesia, right? And it carries two distinct word meanings there. Ek meaning out, <laughs> right? And kasil meaning to call. <laughs> Called out people. That's what Jesus wants us to be. People called out of the world, called into his marvelous light. Called out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. The image of the people being called out, called out even of their homes and into the marketplace. The church of God can, right now cannot meet in this church building but they are still to be the church. Church, you're still to be the church. Out of the world, shining your light for Jesus. We're called out from sin, the sin that had, a, in, had us enslaved before. We're set free from that. We're called out of sin, called into a new life. Right? We're to be a holy people. What does holy mean? It means to be separated, to be separate, separate from sin and separated to God. And so we see the church is to be separated from sin and separated to God. When we look at the timeline of the I will statements... <laughs> that he's called us into new life, we start to see what a great teacher, what a great leader that Jesus was. <laughs> when he met those disciples on the shore that day as they were coming in, <laughs> when he said, come and follow me and I'll make you disciples, he didn't say, I will build my church then. <laughs> no. He drew them along. He encouraged their hearts, encouraged their faith in the blessings that are ours when we follow the Lord, when we follow his ways. There are definite perks to being a believer in Jesus. <laughs> there is in following him, right, um, and letting them know that he's prepared to offer them. He's promised, he's declared that he will give them rest. How many of you need rest for your minds today? Rest for your body today? I trust, even though we're not meeting together, that you are setting aside a day to worship the Lord. A day to rest, right? He offers them rest. He offers them love, unconditional love he offers them. He offers them a purpose. I see more in you, and I'm going to bring that out infinitely more. I'm going to give you a purpose to live your life. So many of you may be depressed right now because you feel you have no purpose but to sit on the couch all week. And maybe you don't even know what day of the week it is because they're all blending together. He promises to give us purpose. He wants uh, the, his disciples, he wants us to know that we can trust him. He's not going to turn on us. He's not going to reject us when we keep our, our eyes set on him. They'll have everything they need. We will have everything we need to be a success in his building of his church. If and then it's that kind of statement. If we follow him, if we become his disciples, then we'll have rest, we'll have love, we'll have security, we'll have purpose. Then he gets to another I will statement. He says, if I do go away, then I will send the Holy Spirit to you. John 16, verse 7 says, but very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. 
I will send him to you. <laughs> wow, the statements keep getting bigger and better, right? I have plans for you. There, I see more in you. I love you. I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I'm going to build the most important thing <laughs> on your lives and on your faith, and I'm not. But then he goes on all this. He says, but I'm going to leave you. I'm sure the disciples were very sad to hear that, very confused to hear that. Wait, what did you say? If you go away, what is that? What is that? He knew he was le going to leave them eventually. Of course, he's not at that point here in John 16. But he tells them plainly that, that he will send. He will send an advocate. Very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. He promised that. He promised that he, he knew what lied ahead. He knew that the cross was before him. He knew he would be leaving them. But he said, I will send a advocate. That's what the NIV says. Now, those statements, they, they keep getting better, all these things. But now, what is this about? But he comforts them. He comforts them even in the fact that it was not, he wasn't to stay on earth forever. <laughs> that he would be returning to heaven, returning to the right hand of the throne of God. He knew that was coming, but he promises not to leave them. He promises to send another. In fact, the scriptures say another helper, another one, <laughs> meaning another one like him. Oh, only this this part of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, would not be um, have limitations of a body. <laughs> the Holy Spirit of God, that paraclete, um, is rich in meaning, all right? It's translated into English in many, uh, many descriptive words. We see the counselor, the strengthener. The comforter, and I'm not talking about a down comforter. I'm talking about a down comforter for your soul. A comforter to comfort you. A helper, a Holy Spirit helper, an advisor. This is the way to go. This is the way to go. An advocate, an advocate intervening for us, an ally, a friend, an intercessor. We see that paraclete, that Greek word describing the Holy Spirit, is, is fit for all of those descriptions, all of those roles, if you will. Hallelujah. A comforter, a friend, an ally, an advocate, an advisor. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy Spirit in my life every day. The disciples must have been relieved to hear that God was sending someone else. God was going to send someone else to come to them to help them. And then in John 14, 3. I love, we're just going to start with verse 1 there. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. Here comes an I will promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. And take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. <laughs> I will come back for you. I will come back for you. <laughs> no man left behind. <laughs> That's the Marines motto, but Jesus started it. He will come back for us. He will come back. Jesus promised he would come 
again. <laughs> he promised the Holy Spirit to be here until then. <laughs> Right? And and it's based on the truth. We know that every one of his promises have come true. And some aspect or another, they've come true. And there's no reason not to, to doubt him that this one would not come true. Jesus kept his promises. He kept his promises. Right? The disciples knew that his promise to return was no different. So what are these I will? Jesus said, I will, I will, I will. What do they mean to you? What do they mean to me today? Exactly the same thing that they meant to the disciples when they first heard them from his lips. Jesus will show us how to fish for people. How to fish for people. My prayer for you, church, during this time when we are in our separate, in our homes, is that God will speak to you and show you how to fish for those around you. How you can reach out, how you can be a blessing, how you can share your faith with them. He will show us how to fish for people. I think of the disciples in the boat. They fished all night and caught no fish. Jesus said, put your nets on the other side. Mm -hmm. And they did. Perhaps Jesus is telling us, put your net on the other side. Put them on the other side. He will show us how to fish for people. Jesus will give us rest. Oh, if there was ever an age where we needed rest, it is today. He will give us rest. He will never reject us. He will love us. He will reveal himself to us. He reveals himself over and over and over in the word of God. In the Old Testament and in the New, he reveals himself. He reveals himself to us every day. Jesus will do what we ask in his name. There's power and authority in his name. Amen. And he will use us to build his church. We're the lively stones that he's put together. And oh, how we long for the day when these lively stones can come here in person, and build up the church, right? Jesus will give us the Holy Spirit to comfort, to advise, to guide us. Yes, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus will return. There's been a lot of talk about his return of late. The events on the news point us, point us to his soon coming. And he will come again. He will come again. His word is true. Our next step (laughs) is to make sure that our will lines up with his will. That our will (laughs) lines up with his. For when we become disciples, we learn from him. We follow him through his word. When his I will becomes our will, great things will happen. Great things will happen in your life and mine. We'll reach more people than we ever have before. We'll experience greater rest, greater peace, greater satisfaction, a greater song we'll sing, a greater walk we'll walk when our will becomes his will. We'll see the church exploding in numbers and in depth with the Lord. There's new people come to Christ. New people learn about Christ when our will gets lost in his will. In his will. As we seek to align our hearts and our lives with God's great plan. Disciples... Involved, it includes that word discipline, doesn't it? And there's discipline in following Jesus. Yes. Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10, Jesus teaches us to pray. He teaches his disciples how to pray. He says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Our Father. 
You see, when we become a child of God, we join the family. And he becomes our father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Holy, holy is your name, right? Your kingdom come. Your will be done. <laughs> On earth as it is in heaven. In our hearts and in our lives. That your will be done. Amen? Our will aligning with his will his words amen the disciples understood that when they would give god all they had god would become all they needed all they needed when we give him all we have then he becomes all we need the disciples gave up their jobs we see that <laughs> we see that in the very first i will statement he said follow me and i will make you fishers of men they left their nets, <laughs> they left their jobs, they left their fishing business, right? They left their identity. Oh, there goes Peter and Andrew, <laughs> James and John. Oh, they're fishermen. No, they gave that up. They gave up the safety <laughs> of their income and their comfort to follow Jesus. They gave up all they had to become his disciple. And in return, he helped them create the greatest movement that the world has ever seen. In Acts, it talks about the disciples that turned the world upside down <laughs> because they noted they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. And so it made all the difference in the world and the church... <laughs> These disciples, these 12 men who followed Christ, who gave up their all to follow him, to learn from him, they turned the world upside down. That's what we're told. Imagine what our church <laughs> could look like. We got some empty chairs in our church, <laughs> a lot today, but we've got some. On an average Sunday. Imagine what our church would look like. What the ministries of our church would look like. If we gave it all to God. <laughs> Imagine what our town would look like. What the Hudson Valley would look like. If we gave it all to God. <laughs> if we made God's will our will. We need to pray like Christ. Not my will but yours be done. And he will. I believe when we give God what we have, no matter how much we think we have or how little we have, and truly buy into his plan for our world, that we will accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or even think. There's infinitely more in store for you. Infinitely more. Immeasurably more. Immeasurably. You can't count it. There's so much more. I don't know where you are today. Perhaps you've never received that love. Perhaps you've never surrendered your heart and your life to him. I encourage you to do so today. You will find a greater joy, a greater peace than you will find anywhere else in this world. Everything else has an expiration date. Everything. But our relationship with the Lord has no expiration date. He won't reject you. He who comes to me, I will not reject. He will not reject us. Pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what my past is. You don't know. No, I don't, but God does, and he loves you anyways. He died for you even in your ugly sin, as he died for me. We come to him. We admit we're a sinner. We believe in our heart that he paid the price for my salvation. And we confess him as our Lord. And then we begin this journey with Jesus to follow him. Reach out to me, and I would love to talk to you more about that. But I want to encourage you to choose to follow Jesus. Perhaps you have um, been with the Lord 
and you're needing rest, Jesus promised, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I will give you rest. Give your burdens to Jesus. Give them all to him. Broken hearts, shattered dreams, give them to Jesus. You'd be surprised what he can do with them. Amen. Church, we need to commit ourselves to the work that Jesus calls us to do, to be fishers of men. He said, I will build my church. <laughs> we want to be part of that church, don't we? We want him to work in us that we would share our faith, and the Holy Spirit is quick to help us to do so. So as we close in prayer, I don't know where you are today, but the Lord does. Lord Jesus, I pray for those, O oh God, who have yet to receive you as their Lord and as their Savior. I pray, God, that you would move upon their hearts, that they would open their heart's door to you and ask you to come in that they will follow you wholeheartedly. Lord, because I know you see more in them. I know you can forgive a multitude of sins. Lord, we thank you for that, and we give you praise. I pray, Lord, today for those that are weary. This pandemic has us all weary. Lord God, we pray that you would refresh us and rejuvenate us as we spend time with you. And Lord God, I ask that you would set a fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit, a blaze in our hearts and in our lives, God, that we would be your witnesses, that we would share the hope, the reason of the hope that we have found in you. For Lord, surely you are coming soon. May our hearts be ready, I pray. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we close today, I want to encourage you to um, continue to pray for those in the church. Pray for the lost. Pray for those around you. I encourage you to continue to support the work of the church and the missionaries um, as, as we worship the Lord in our giving, our tithes and our offerings. Um, we have set up online giving. Um, at this point, and you may do so at tithe.ly, tithe T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Um, there's a link on our Facebook page um, that you can do that if you choose to, or of course, you're welcome to mail it in or bring it by. That's fine as well. Let me remind you, we always collect a baby bottle offering for our local pregnancy um, crisis centers and uh, we do that from Mother's Day to Father's Day and so I would encourage you to include that in your giving um, for um, that we would support them as they still have rent to pay and all those things helping women in crisis all right so I encourage you to give in that way um, we're going to be um, including a time of communion now As we close today, we're going to include our communion service. Um, think of Jesus who said he belongs to partake with us again. I hope that you've received your cup. For those that have not, um, you can pause it and, and get your supplies ready. But Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We hold a thin wafer in our hands, a picture of our Lord's body. You know, I like that the Lord used bread in every society, in every culture around the world throughout time. <laughs> They've had a form of bread. Jesus said he is the bread of life, and he was broken for us. Broken, striped, pierced for us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you 
Lord, that although we are separate at this time, Lord, we can be together with you. I pray, O oh God, that as we join with believers around this world, receiving, Lord, the elements of communion that represent your broken body and your shed blood for the remission of our sins. You are broken for our wholeness, O oh God, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you came you humbled yourself, you became the bread of life from Bethlehem, the house of bread for us, broken for us, crushed, beaten, bruised, speared, nails in your hands and your feet, a crown of thorns upon your head for us, for our sin, to pay the price that we could never pay. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We ask now, Lord God, that you would bless the elements to our body and our bodies to your service, we pray in Jesus' name. Let us partake together. Thank you, Jesus. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake together. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until... He comes until he comes. We're proclaiming that the, his death on the cross was enough to pay for my sin. It was enough to pay for your sin. And we are to do it in remembrance of him until he comes. Amen. Until he comes. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you once again for your great sacrifice to pay the price for our sin. We ask, oh God, that you would cleanse us, purify our hearts, Lord. Help us to live for you, we pray, with all that is within us. And Lord, as we long to be together again, as we long, oh Lord, to see you. Lord, quicken our hearts, we pray, for surely you are coming soon. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. We hope to see you real soon. God bless.